The Rough Draft Diaries with Haley Taylor is sponsored in part by the CHWC Bryan Hospital, enhancing the health, safety, and well-being of the community. I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. It's the very first day of the new year, so Happy New Year, everybody. And if you haven't noticed it yet, 2020, I mean, we're back in the roaring 20s again. You could be a flapper or a dandy if you've always wanted to. Now's your chance. Oftentimes, with the new year, you think ahead of what's to come. But I've been thinking behind about what came before. I've got a pretty solid understanding of music of the 1920s and films of the 1920s. Uh, I did all right in my history class learning about national and world events happening within that decade. But I don't know a great deal about Toledo in the 1920s. So that's what we're going to do for this New Year's Day special, return back to Toledo in the Roaring Twenties. My name is Barbara Floyd, and I am retired. I have been a longtime lover of Toledo history, and I've um, written a lot of books on Toledo history and articles on Toledo history, and I also have taught Toledo history at the University of Toledo. Barbara is going to be our guide for today's episode, and she wants to start slightly before the 20s, as the years leading up to 1920 set the economic base of the city. In 1888, you had the Libby Glass Company starting in Toledo. 1898, Ford Plate Glass. 1901, Toledo Scale. 1904, Owens, Illinois, the Bottle Company. Then you had the Overland Automobile Company, Champion Spark Plug. So many companies that, again, set the foundation for the Roaring Twenties. As the economy and prosperity skyrockets and immigrants flood into our city, Eastern Europeans, the Poles, Middle Easterners, Hungarians, they they come in seeking positions in these factories. And so it's a very vibrant community. It's a, a strong economic base. And the image probably best associated with this sense of freedom and economic prosperity would be the women of the 1920s. Well, you know, the most important thing for women of this decade was in 1919, they got the right to vote, which um, I think changed the future of women and what women were capable of. And women had social lives beyond their home, I think largely for the first time. There was entertainment that you could do at night that was a little naughty and a little um, different from the prim and proper life of, of women before that time. And it certainly influenced the culture because for the first time we have live theaters being built downtown. That kind of opportunity was good not only for women, but it was good overall for the city because it expanded the horizons of women. Flappers may be the image of the 20s, but prohibition was the issue of the 20s. Sneaking into a speakeasy may sound romantic now, but as Barbara points out, it did not create a positive environment for the city of Toledo. Toledo, in many ways, epitomized the faults of this law. So you had this gang, and they began to run alcohol across the Detroit River from Canada down into Detroit, and then expanded then on down to Toledo because we were kind of the natural transportation route to get this alcohol beyond. And the Licavoli gang, uh, or the Purple Gang as they were known, were this powerful family. They sort of took over Toledo. They also took over the numbers game. They took over rackets. They were completely controlling of city government. The Toledo police were almost powerless to stop them. So there are all kinds of aspects of prohibition, but I think Toledo is kind of interesting because it showcases all of the, a, a myriad of issues related to prohibition. If prohibition was the issue of the 20s, then the 1930s had the Great Depression. But what happened in the 30s was deeply connected, as it often is, in the years leading up to that decade, in the last few years, the 1920s. Because money was easy, um, you could get loans, you could buy a house with very little down, you could buy a car in the same way. All of these sort of overheated economic factors, by the end of the decade, People were so caught up in the moment that when suddenly the stock market crashed, people were surprised, but they shouldn't have been surprised because companies began to overproduce. And one of those was the Willys Overland Automobile Company. To balance out their surplus of products with little revenue, in the beginning of 1929, Willys laid off thousands of their workers. 
Their payroll made up 40 percent of the population of Toledo. And I have read studies that there are few cities in the United States that suffered more during the Depression than Toledo. Um, it had one of the largest unemployment rates in, this, in the country, about 50 percent unemployment, I've read. We, sh- we should have seen it coming, but I think people were caught up in all of the, the glamour and the excitement and the f- easy money and the prosperity and just refused to believe that it could ever end. The idea of easy money may have gotten Toledo off track heading into the Great Depression, but there were a few institutions that survived and thrived from that same sense of posterity and forward thinking. In 1925, the Toledo Museum of Art built a big expansion on the museum. So that is a lasting legacy of this prosperity of the decade. In 1928, the Toledo voters approved a bond levy, which raised $2.8 million to build a brand new university campus for the University of Toledo on Bancroft Street. So yeah, there was a lot of groundwork. And and while the Depression decade was, was tragic, Parts of the, you know, parts of those things that began in the 1920s survived that very difficult time and were able to prosper again uh, at the end of the Depression decade. It's funny thinking back 100 years ago to the 1920s and then wondering what people in 100 years will think about these 20s. And maybe there will be some radio show in 100 years, if radio is still around, that will do a special on all the work that you did within this decade, right here in your own city. Makes the future seem kind of exciting, doesn't it? I hope you feel like you can start this year off on the right foot. And that, of course, that the Rough Draft Diaries will be a part of it. For now, I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening. (laughs) 